Chapter 11, Rainbow Sage. Korn and company safely repel the Hoshinan invaders and arrive in Notre Sages. There they discover more forces awaiting them. Huh, this town looks exactly like the one we just left. Yes. Huh? No. Oh. Um. Hmm. Um... Hoshinans? Sure do. <laughs> huh? Well... Yeah. I see. Azura. <sighs> yes. Poor thing. Big sister. Oh, my. Not to worry. Yeah. If I may. What?
This battle for the Sevenfold Sanctuary plays very differently from the defense of Port Dia. The enemies are siloed into separate rooms that are connected by stairways, but only the player can use them. If we want, we can take on each room one by one, then regroup and heal up before using our entire army to conquer the next room. There is no time pressure here. The challenge lies only in the composition of the individual enemy formations. To finish this battle, we must make our way to the top and defeat Hinoka. That's the victory condition, so we'll have to take care of all our other business first. Hinoka is quite fast, especially with Darting Blow, but overall she's not too threatening. She doesn't have the kind of raw power that Takumi did with his Fujinyumi, and even though she has a skill that cancels out her weakness to bows, it's easy enough to beat her with a strong physical attacker like Camilla. Hinoka carries a Steel Nagayari, which is an enemy-only version of a Steel Naginata that also has 1-2 range. These kinds of weapons are almost exclusively given to stationary bosses, so that you can't cheese them by attacking from outside their range. Hinoka also has both Rallying Cry and Inspiration to power up nearby allies, and the samurai behind her have Jantium to reduce the damage she and the other Sky Knights take. Those skills make it somewhat harder to dismantle Hinoka's squad, as does the Shrine Maiden tucked away in the back. This Maiden is the second one that you can capture in Conquest, and in runs where you've reclassed Jacob or Felicia, it's often worth getting at least one of them because of story events in Chapter 12. We can climb to the top of the Sevenfold Sanctuary using either of two routes. The one on the right pits us against Azama and our old friend Rinka. Going up the left side instead, we have to deal with Setsuna and Kaze. Setsuna is one of the rare exceptions to the rule that the enemy-only weapons with 1-2 range are only given to stationary bosses. She's able to move, but she nevertheless carries a steel shortbow. It's especially strange because that's not even a Hoshiden weapon. The enemy-only Yumi are Hankyu, not shortbows. Setsuna is accompanied by several other archers who all have counter. You have to be mindful of that when attacking them. On Lunatic Mode, there's also a Diviner, so you can't solve this room purely by planting some kind of dedicated anti-archer unit at the edge of Satsuna's range. The next room is Kaze's. His loadout is relatively normal, but he does carry Vantage, which is something we'll have to work around. His personal skill still works when he's an enemy, so we'll have to be mindful of that, too. Kaze's group forms the first Lunge Chain in Conquest. If you can't kill these enemies with your counterattacks, they will lunge their target to drag them across the room, separate them from any support, and give them a death by a thousand cuts. Or roughly ten cuts, as the case may be. The Oni Savage up front makes life difficult for many units who could otherwise tank the ninjas, especially Effie, since he carries a hammer. The most fearsome chamber is this middle one. It's not easy to kill the samurai pairs on the flanks if you let them attack you. They're very fast, and they have Armored Blow. And if you fail to kill them, they'll use Lunge to pull you toward the real threat, the middle pair of Samurai who each have the skill Life and Death. Life and Death provides an enormous damage bonus, but that's supposed to be balanced by the fact that it also increases damage taken by 10. In this particular formation, it's not so easy to exploit that. If you simply charge in to kill one of these Life and Death Samurai on player phase, the second one still gets to attack you. The only character who can usually pull that off is Camilla, by using the Dual Club. Azama has no actual weapons, but he does have a hexing rod. Any unit hit by this rod has their maximum HP cut in half for the remainder of the battle. It's a very unpleasant effect, although it's really not as bad as it sounds. What is truly heinous in this room is that every single enemy has Miracle, giving them a random chance to survive attacks that would otherwise be lethal. On Azama, Miracle combines with his personal Divine Retribution skill and his counter skill to make an unwary player accidentally kill their own units. On the rest of these enemies, Miracle is basically just a big nuisance. Lastly, Rinka heads up a squad of Oni Savages. Like Setsuna, she carries the 1-2 range version of an ordinary steel weapon. But otherwise, she doesn't have a lot of tricks up her sleeve. Warding Blow protects her from mages, but her squad mates don't have that same protection. And Rinka's resistance isn't very good, so you can just finish her off with tomes on player phase if need be. All of the Oni Savages share Rinka's Seal Resistance skill. For them, it does nothing, but it can make your units more vulnerable to the Diviners in Azama's room if you don't wait around for several turns to let the Seal wear off. The ninja here is supposed to stop you from sweeping all the Oni Savages with a sword unit like Selina. We can choose which path to take, right or left. We don't have to do both. 
Even if we want to get all the treasure from the chests guarded by Kaze and Azama, we can skip Setsuna or Rinka entirely. But of course, we're here for experience, so we're not skipping anything. And we're not circling around and doubling back, either. We're going to fight our way up both sides at the same time. Silas will join Camilla and her retainers on the eastern path, while everyone else goes west. Azura is on the bench, even though her singing would be a huge help. That's because our most onerous constraints in this challenge are the support requirements, or more specifically, the way our support requirements interact with our deployment limits. To accommodate every unit, we have to unlock supports efficiently. For example, Arthur must earn support with both Effie and Niles. Right now, those three characters are linked. We have to deploy them all together so that Arthur can advance both relationships at the same time. But after Arthur completes those support chains, he becomes a free agent. He will have to come back later to satisfy his training requirements, but when he does, he'll only occupy one deployment slot instead of three. I believe For Setsuna's room, we're adopting a rather unorthodox strategy. We're having Nyx use Nosferatu. She's very bad at that because of her paper defenses and awful accuracy, but Korn mitigates both of those problems. Mozu and Niles also grant Nick some hit bonuses by being adjacent. Arthur waits at the bottom of the stairs, and Felicia does likewise. Meanwhile, Camilla's squad prepares to engage Rinka. Let's see how this goes. I'll support you. No mercy. Here I am. Ah! Me too. Huh? Not a chance. Here's a rare instance where Counter Curse actually helps Nyx score a kill. Are you okay? Fate is cruel. I'm here to help. Can I help? Let's do this! We have several goals for this turn. One is to eliminate almost all of the enemies in this room, making sure we feed experience to and build supports between the right people, of course. But another is to set up Dao of Friendship, and a third is to move Arthur toward the next staircase so we can get into Kaze's room quickly. There are 11 tiles between Arthur and his destination, and he only has 5 movement. If he uses his full movement now, he can attack Setsuna or the other healthy archer, but then he'll need some assistance to cross the 6 remaining tiles later. Ideally, we could use Nyx's Heartseeker skill to help Arthur defeat Setsuna. Unfortunately, with this exact arrangement of enemies, the geometry doesn't work out for that. Instead of going up by Setsuna, Nyx will stay put. Let's give him hell. To activate Vow of Friendship, Korn must take at least 12 points of damage. Luckily, the enemy archers give us a very consistent and controllable mechanism for that. We can exploit Counter to wound Korn on purpose. Let's go this one. It's over. Silas won't be using Vow of Friendship just yet, but it'll come into play in a few short turns. Effie should not go kill the wounded archer. She needs to support Arthur in a certain number of battles for them to get married after this mission, and Arthur must use his full movement to reach the next room, so Effie needs to go northeast as far as she possibly can. Felicia has a chance to attack the archer too, but she also ignores him. Nyx wants to unlock her B support with Mozu, so we're saving this kill to help with that. 
It is within Camilla's power to destroy all the enemies in here herself, but even better than that, she enables Baruka to do it for her. Selena changes Baruka's weapon and pairs up with her, making her fast enough to double all four of the generic Oni savages. And Rose's thorns makes Baruka strong enough to one-round them. Now that the ninja is gone, the only opponent in here with a ranged weapon is Rinka, and Rinka can be ignored for the time being. Coin transfers Niles to Arthur, giving Arthur the extra point of movement he needs to reach the next staircase. The point behind this is that someone has to eliminate the Oni Savage in Kaze's room, thereby breaking the first link in the lunge chain. This Oni Savage has 29 HP, 9 speed, and 11 defense, and we have to defeat him in a single round of combat, so we need 26 attack and 14 speed. I'll be your shield! Nyx applies Heartseeker, and then Mozu takes the kill. Like Arthur and many of our other early units, we're going to set Mozu aside very soon to make room for new recruits. When it's time to bring her back, we'll have to promote her. Villager will not be a viable class anymore. Whatever training we give Mozu before we bench her will determine how effective she can be upon her return. She can be very, very powerful when she comes back, but only if we give her a lot of experience now. So far, only Baruka has had her resistance sealed. We'd like to keep it that way, preserving everyone else's ability to fight mages in the next room. We are therefore having Baruka weaken Rinka and then letting Camilla take the victory, rather than the other way around, which would be better for experience purposes. All right. Let's see how this goes. Pay for this. A nice forged bronze axe would be far preferable than the iron axe plus one, but I accepted the risk here to cut costs. In the future, we will still need multiple separate bronze axes many times. Kaze's ninjas have been activated, but when we retreat down the stairs, they'll go back to their initial positions. Felicia can heal Arthur, but it's not necessary right now, so she doesn't. Everyone else crowds around the stairs to prepare for our next incursion into Kaze's chamber. Your turn, child. I'm with you. I'll play with you. Azama's Hexing Rod is supposed to be a powerful deterrent, and there's no way to lure his companions away from Azama's range. If we want to fight them at all, we will have to accept the risk of getting hexed. But with Thou of Friendship up and Camilla supporting him, Silas simply doesn't care. Even after losing half his HP, he'll be able to survive hits from three different diviners.
The hexing rod will cut Silas's HP from 26 to 13. He has 9 displayed resistance, or effectively 12 with Thou of Friendship, and 13 with Rose's Thorns. Silas also wields a javelin, which has an advantage over scrolls, so the diviners lose one attack from their weaponry. Thus, the two Ox Spirit diviners hit Silas for only 3 damage, 17 minus 14, and the Tiger Spirit diviner hits him for 6. That's 12 total, and Silas survives. Silas also deals enough damage to kill in one hit, so even if Miracle were to activate, Camilla would be able to finish the job with her dual strike. Miracle would technically work to our advantage by giving Camilla some extra tome experience. No hard feelings. Kaze's squad has reset. We're going to pull it again, this time taking out the closest of the five ninjas on enemy phase. Arthur will counter using his hand axe and a dual strike from Effie. If he's successful, there will only be four ninjas left, and we'll be able to deal with them fairly easily, since two of our units will already be in the room, and reinforcements will be close behind. The positioning of our units downstairs is rather important. All five of them need to reach specific locations next turn. I'm here to help. Silas no longer needs Vow of Friendship, and Korn needs to be healed. Let's leave no survivors! It's alright. Over in the east, Silas rides north toward Azama, preparing to fight him next turn. It falls to Camilla, Baruka, and Selina to take out the Archer and the Diviner. Baruka and Selina want the kills, and they'll get them, but Camilla's involvement dramatically reduces the risk that Miracle might ruin our day. Must I restrain myself? It would be best if Baruka could use the dual club right now, but she's exactly one point shy of unlocking it. The bronze axe will have to do. This is my mission. Whoa, thanks. On enemy phase, Azama will try to hex Baruka because she has the worst staff avoid. Whether he hits or not, it doesn't matter. In terms of reliability, Arthur is definitely a weak link on this mission. But the strategy we're using now is a market improvement on some of my old ones. One of the greatest enhancements I've made is getting Arthur a sea support with Corrin. That will make a big difference in the final two rooms. Before we fight Kaze, let's go address Azama. We don't want to get countered to death, so we should only attack him at range. Selina has no ranged weapons, but she can at least support her teammates with accurate dual strikes. Go, go! On my honor as a knight. We'd like to negate the chance of activating Miracle. In this case, we can do that by reactivating Vow of Friendship, but making Selina use a weaker sword. Then Silas should deal 16 damage, and Selina should deal 3. Azama should therefore take 19 damage if both attacks hit, leaving him with 1 HP exactly. Remember, the condition for Miracle is that it only activates when the unit has more than one hit point. If we're supposed to reactivate Vow of Friendship, then we'll have to turn our attention back to the west. First, Effie moves off the stairs, and she kills one of the ninjas by herself. Niles picks up the treasure. We don't need him in combat just yet.
Nyx is horrible at fighting ninjas, but Heartseeker is quite valuable against Kaze. I'll protect you. We've got this. If Korn attacks Kaze using his Dragonstone, Korn's health will drop below 50%, but Kaze's will not, and therefore Kaze's vantage skill will not get activated. When I was planning this run, I actually revised my routing of stone experience so that Korn would not reach C rank until after that last attack. If Korn had already had that rank, and if he had hit his magic growth just one extra time, Korn would have dealt 16 damage instead of 14, and that would have been bad. Because Vantage is not active, we can easily defeat Kaze using a dual strike. And we certainly want to eliminate Kaze before we fight the ninja adjacent to him, because Miraculous Save still works. Kaze can prevent the death of a teammate he's supporting if he gets lucky, and we can't have that. Let you down. Arthur destroys the more distant of the two remaining ninjas. Strength is everything. Oh, Striving on the side. Such heroism. We can do this together. Felicia cannot kill the last ninja, so the best thing she can do is to heal Nyx. We can do this together. Fine, I'll protect you. Uh -oh. Oh, it's just fine. Nobody missed, so Miracle is out of play, and we can be fairly confident that Baruka's attack will succeed. With this last ninja, we have another opportunity to feed experience and support points to a deserving unit. We'll give those things to Arthur, who's working on support with Effie, Niles, and Corin all at once. Let's do this! Taste justice! I'll protect you. Okay, let's go! Felicia removed her weapon for the sake of a manipulation that we'll do in a couple of turns. I'll go with you. Team Camilla has finished its tasks a little faster than Team Corin, so they'll just hang out by the stairs for a moment. Everything will be fine. Let's see how this goes. Shall we proceed? Team Corrin also gathers around the stairs as we get ready to attack the samurai room. Don't die on me. Not yet. It'll be fine. Oh. 
All right, come on. Be careful. Evil shall not be all prevail. Right. I'll protect you. Our western squad will be responsible for the enemies on the left side of the samurai room, while the eastern squad will deal with the right side. No one's going to attack the life and death samurai. Instead, we'll freeze them. Camilla's team is arranged such that Silas can kill the diviner, Camilla can then weaken the lead samurai on the right, and then Selina can kill that lead samurai. This setup works because Silas has enough strength to one-shot the diviner by himself. If he didn't, then Camilla would need to go in first, thereby allowing Silas to use the boost from Rose's thorns. Silas heals himself in preparation, although that's technically not necessary because he previously evaded two attacks. Arthur moves in first. With Supportive, his hit rates against the ninja are pretty good, and he won't take too much damage from the ninja's counterattacks, not even with a crit. You'll be all right. Can I help? Felicia casts Freeze. This is crucial. If she misses, someone dies for sure. We had Felicia unequip her weapons so that she would be an effective decoy for the ninja. Every other enemy will be either frozen or dead. Let's make this fun. Oh, look. This is good work. Here I go. I won't let Mozu takes go. Effie's brass naginata and then she takes the kill. I'll protect you. Did I get stronger? Effie has kept the forged bronze lance, which gives her a strong enough dual strike to pick up the kill when Nyx uses fire. I'll crush them. Not over yet. You, you saved me. On guard. Everything will be fine. Camilla goes in after Silas, and because she's going second, she can switch Silas to his Naginata, improving his defenses. That's important because after we kill the lead samurai on the right, we'll want the supporting samurai to attack Selina and not Silas. This is my mission. How shall we proceed? It's pretty easy to clear the remaining enemies. I've got your back. Together we shall prevail. I'll protect you. Before Nyx moves, we'll take advantage of the fact that the ninja has applied Heartseeker to himself, and we'll help Mozu earn some additional experience. I'll go with you. <laughs> Too slow. Whoa. Oh. We won't give up. I don't need 
your forgiveness. What now? Here I go. I will help you. How unfortunate! You saved me! There's another treasure in Azama's room. Arthur transfers Niles to Camilla so that Camilla can carry Niles to the Everything chest. Will be fine. How wonderful. Let's see how this goes. Enfeeble is best used on tough bosses. I find that this free one is almost always enough to last me for the whole campaign. Our next goal is to take out Hinoka's companions before we defeat Hinoka herself. Our entire team will enter the final room as we set up. I'll go with you. Can we do this? I'll protect you. Appearances can be deceiving. How very annoying. It'll be fine. I'll do my best. Silas no longer requires his javelin, so Effie can take it from him. In the name of justice, evil shall not prevail. Arthur gives Camilla the forged iron axe, and he also pairs up with her temporarily. That allows Baruka to kill one of the generic Sky Knights using Camilla's dual strike. Baruka has no further use for the dual club, but Arthur may want it later. Silas pulls Baruka out of danger. Can we start now? Let's Niall stands in range of the other Bolt Naginata Sky Knight. Effie pairs up with him to guard against dual strikes and to discourage attacks from Hinoka. We want Hinoka to go for someone else, namely Arthur. Here I am. Corrin's support makes Arthur take only 9 damage per hit from Hinoka. That's still dangerous if she gets a crit, but when Felicia heals Arthur, she'll also apply Demoiselle, reducing that 9 damage to 7. To kill Arthur from full HP, Hinoka would have to get 2 crits in a row. I'm here for you. Camilla gets her own chance to confront her Hoshinan counterpart.
can do this together. It's not over yet. Effie will stay in the active roster for a bit longer than Arthur will because she still has to unlock the Archer class from Mosey. Once Arthur is off the board, Korn will be Effie's best available partner, but only after they achieve a C support, which they haven't even started yet. So Korn trades Arthur for Effie before attacking Hinoka himself. Several enemies in this mission make for useful captives. These Sky Knights can be promoted to the Falcon Knight class, providing mounted healing and early access to rally speed. Let us join our strength. <laughs> Again, we can use Shelter to pull a unit out of danger, but we have to unpair Arthur from Niles first. Must I restrain myself? We have no choice. I've got your back. The attack from the Samurai pair has reactivated Vow of Friendship. If Korn's stats had been a little different, that might not have happened. Our objective is to eliminate the Samurai, capture the Shrine Maiden, and then weaken Hinoka as many times as we can before ultimately defeating her. Silas's extra attack power from Vow of Friendship sometimes makes a difference in that last step. Nyx just barely survives these Samurai. In fact, we had to give her a speed boosting meal just to ensure that they wouldn't double her. Although she happened to gain speed at level 13, so that wasn't necessary in the end. Here I go. Remain calm. That went well. I believe in you. Show me what you've got. It's technically better for Arthur to use his least accurate axe to maximize the chance that Effie can dual strike for this kill, but I'm going for consistent results using the dual club rather than fishing for extra experience at random. Shall we kill them? Careful out there! <laughs> to the rescue! <laughs> 
If we're aiming to capture the Shrine Maiden, then we need to make room for Niles by using Shelter. Such a tease. The advantage this Shrine Maiden has over the one from Chapter 9 is that she's already level 10, so you don't have to train her at all before promotion. I guess that's it. All right. In cases where Baruka has been hexed by Azama, it may be necessary for Felicia to heal her before she attempts to attack Hinoka. This, is my this illustrates why vow of friendship sometimes matters here. If Baruka were a little stronger, Silas's dual strike would kill. And that would be unfortunate because we really want to give the boss experience to Selina, not Baruka. Baruka's already level 13, and she doesn't need any more. However, if this had been a problem, I could have played around it by having Camilla attack Hinoka again before we eliminated the samurai. Those samurai had Jantian, which would have reduced the damage from Camilla's attack. Fine, I'll protect you. As a precaution against an ill-timed miss, Selina makes Camilla equip a weapon that can actually deal damage. After this, Arthur will get married and he'll achieve an a support with Niles, so it's time to say goodbye to him. Don't worry, he'll be back. <laughs> no. What? Yeah. True. Oh, goodness. No. Um... Yeah. I'm so sorry. Thank you. This is not your call. I see. Welcome to the purple team, Kaze. We've got a love interest and a new best friend lined up for you. 
It's gonna be great. Let's see. Well... Indeed. Um... Yes. I who forged the sacred blade. All right. Hello. Huh? No. Huh? Why, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
No. Thank you. Don't give up hope on your father. Hmm. Why? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Next time, we discover that the Hoshidan invaders have penetrated deep into Nor, and a mysterious illness leads us to a fateful encounter with the High Prince of Hoshido himself.